Today, we're talking about angels ministering for us. Angels ministering for us. What, what are we talking about here? Well, I've mentioned for the last few years, even written a book, What's Your Angel's Name? I've talked about it many, many times. I've brought scripture to the forefront time and time again. And now I'm seeing the Lord doing something even more spectacular. Last week, I sent out an email to those who are on our email list. And let me say, if you use Gmail, you're not receiving all of our mail because Gmail's pushing our stuff into the promotion category, not your inbox. So you're going to have to check your promotion file, your folder there that you have in your Gmail account, and look for things coming from Apostle Kent Simpson, Prophet Kent Simpson, Prophetic Ministry, School of Prophetic, Prophetic Knowledge. Look for our emails. You'll find them in there. The reason I say that is because I sent out another one today. I sent out a reproduction of the same one that went out last week, but I had to change it up a little bit because of what God has done just this last week. I've sent out a few prophecies this week, and we've seen some things take place in these prophecies that are just very, very awesome. I mean, God's doing something he's never done before, and I'll go through it as as we go through this process, and I'll I'll come back around to what we're talking about now, the prophecy request that's going out. But also, I will give you some insight in today's message in the answer and question session on angels to minister for us, but also it will touch upon every part of what is happening through these prophecies that the Lord has me doing. Now, I want to also preface, because some people really get real queasy about talking about angels because they're afraid that people are going to start worshiping angels rather than God won't happen, doesn't happen, and it makes no sense. And here's the reason why. We love and serve our God. We always will. Nothing will change what Jesus has done for us. Nothing will make us forget what Jesus has done for us. And we know there's nothing the angels can do that could do anything more than what Jesus has already done. But here's what I want to to bring to, to your attention what God revealed to me about the angels. We do not lose our love or service for him when we have angels appointed to us <clears throat> to minister for us, as said in Hebrews 1 and 14. Like unto generals in any kind of military who have warriors appointed to, to their command, do they stop serving their leadership just because they've got a bunch of warriors working under them? No. God is appointing generals now and equipping these generals supernaturally for some times that are about to come that will change and turn the course and destiny. We are in the third and final dispensation of what has been taking place for some thousands of years. And it'll continue to go forward. We don't know how long, how many centuries or millenniums it will go, but we know we're on the breaking end of this, which is going to make a huge difference in what takes place for our nation especially, and it will free up many, many other nations and probably even convert a few that never looked like there was any possibility that they would turn to God. But we will see these things unfold, and here's how God will do it. A part of it, a big part of it, he shall use in this day to come. So as I take you to our notes today, and it, by the way, if you want a copy of this today, I'll be glad to share it with you, and it will be shared through the email. So if you just email me for number seven, question number seven, to Prophet Simpson at gmail.com, I will reply back with this copy in a either Microsoft Word doc or it can be in a PDF file. But if you want PDF, you have to ask me for it because I don't I don't duplicate both formats. I just send whatever you ask for. Today we're talking about angels to minister for us, but we're talking about more than that. 
we're talking about a lot of functions of angels, a lot of purpose of the angels. Angels are being appointed to serve you during this special dispensation. Dispensation is a, a period of time, a set course of destiny. These ministering spirits are being sent forth to minister for God's select. He has chosen his elect remnant of followers who are being promoted to his generals. A change is coming. This change is happening. It's already started happening this week. He's appointed angels. His appointed angels are sent to minister for you and to fulfill your calling. Those who are called to generals and fulfill their calling and commission and to activate their spiritual giftings. And it says, as we have read before, most assuredly, I say to you, as Jesus is speaking, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he shall do, because I go to my Father. John 14, 12. Over the past week, a few partners I have already, re have already received their impartation of the gift of, of faith, ministering spirits, which are angels, and more through his word being prophesied, which was given to them by prophecy and the laying on of hands, 1 Timothy 4 and 14. Now, I understand, understand we start out talking about the gift of faith, and then it just exploded into something more, much more. Being I'm not able to physically lay hands upon those who have received their prophecy via email or our Lord, has made some very unusual exceptions. For years, I have had wonderful testimonies from people whom have I've prayed for over handkerchief and mailed them to them to cast out demons and heal their sickness, to deliver them of the sickness that was hindering them. Now, God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought to his body to the sick, and the disease left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. This is very biblical of what I'm talking about doing, that I have been doing, Acts 19.11. Now, God is having me prophesy over his people, appointing ministering spirits, i.e. angels, to minister in those specific spiritual gifts for those whom God has so selected. Here is the part that is most exciting. Listen to this. The prophecies he is using to distribute spiritual gifts through these prophecies and commissioning angels to go to them and to lay hands upon them, i.e. imparting the spiritual gift. Now listen, now isn't that just out of the park? I'm not the one laying hands on them. It's not even the handkerchief, except the handkerchief is actually a point of destination. It's like a spiritual encryption, like there's been a GPS tag put on this handkerchief that's going to you that is marked for that angel or angels, which in this case, this last week, it's been angels, and the and Lord gets into specifics for those angels that are being appointed to the various people that have already received their prophetic word. But he's using the angel to lay hands upon them. How... <laughs> He is not using humans to impart the gift, but the angel that has been appointed to minister for that person whom received the prophecy and the spiritual gift given by the Holy Spirit. People, we are in a rock and awesome move of God. This is just amazing that we are in this period of time where God's doing this. Now, there was a time in the very, very beginning, the first time, I'm gonna come back to this in just a minute, I don't know how many years ago it was. Um, it might have been 2017, maybe even before that. It very well could have been. But the Lord had me start prophesying to impart spiritual gifts into people. And the first week, the prophecies I sent out, which were probably not many, maybe 10 total, if that much. And the Lord said, I'm going to send the angel that will be ministering for you and the angel shall touch you and impart the spiritual gift into you. Now, what 
that that just flipped people out. They they came back just raging mad. I don't want no angel touching me. That's what they'd say. So I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, they're not receiving this. What do you want me to do? And very gruffly, and just with a little bit of frustration, and you could hear it in his voice, he said, then use the handkerchief. I knew exactly what he meant because I'd been sending out handkerchiefs for some time for healing and casting out demons. Now he wants me to use the handkerchief for a point of contact for the receiving of the spiritual gift. One person who really did not want to receive the handkerchief, they wanted the angel to touch them, was Mark Taylor. Now, Mark Taylor, I know many people have heard him on the radio and have seen him on Sid Roth and some others, but he was one of our family partners. He, at the particular time, was had um, gone into private business, an entrepreneur trying to invent some things for the fire departments, rescue services, and he would he contacted me about 10 or 12 times, about a dozen times, I'd say. Very concerned. He said, I haven't seen the angel, hadn't felt the angel. Do you, are you sure the angel's going to come and be appointed to me to minister for me? Because you sent me the handkerchief, and, and I heard that you had spoken to other people that God would send the angel to touch them. I, I want the angel to touch me if that's what God wants to do. I said, no, you've got to be just... Be patient. It's going to happen. Well, that went on probably about three or four months. And then the next thing I know, he's calling me up just all excited. I mean, he was so excited and he was talking so fast, I could barely keep up with what all he was saying. But essentially what he was saying is, man, the angel came. I had a dream. I put the dream out there about Trump. And lo and behold, it happened just like the angel said. I've got the angel now. And he just took off. I mean, he was exploding into his newfounded ministry. So my point is this. God's bringing this back around after, I don't know, five, six, seven years later, and he's doing it again. But I guess he's taking some precaution here because he still wants me to send the handkerchief. And that's what, what we're doing. We're sending the handkerchief. But just know the handkerchief is like a... a GPS chip. I'm not saying there's one in there. I'm just saying it's kind of like that in a spiritual way to designate that angel where to go that's being prophesied. I'm prophesying to you on the the video. You understand what I'm saying. And then the later, then right after that, the handkerchief is mailed out to you. And then by the time it gets there, then there has to be a time for that angel to dial in where you're at. I'm sure it's not that hard and probably don't even need a handkerchief, but just go along with me as I'm trying to explain this. And as that that happens, now you understand this. In Acts 19, when Apostle Paul came to some followers of John the Baptist, he he talked to those fellows as if they knew nothing about the Holy Ghost. In fact, they said they never even heard such thing of the Holy Ghost. And he said, well, what were you baptized in? They said, Baptist, the baptism of John. They said, well, you need to receive the baptism of Jesus. And immediately they received the Holy Spirit. Then Apostle Paul laid hands upon them and imparted the gift of tongues and the gift of prophecy. And they began to speak in tongues and prophesy. This is a big part of what you need to understand and what God's doing for you in this particular mix of prophecy requests that are going out. They're all the same. I mean, as far as the letter that goes out, with a few adjustments just because of how much more power there is in this particular word. But yet the, the, the functions of this thing is just rocking awesome. Okay. Let's get back to our notes because we've got to, we got to get in this. We've got quite a few pages to go through today. So let's not tarry too long. All right. (laughs) Now this is just amazing me what God's doing. So these spiritual gifts are listed in 1 Corinthians 12, talking about spiritual gifts God's appointing because it's not just one. The gift of faith, yes, but there's more. Another thing I have noticed is that the variety of commissions that are being prophesied into existence are very unusual. These new ministries being birthed are nothing like anything we have ever seen before. And that's what I want to talk about. I put the same list of all the nine spiritual gifts, but that's not what I'm going to focus in on so much 
in this passage, but rather the first part of this passage about diversities of gifts, the same Spirit, and the differences in ministries by the same Lord, and their diversities of activities by the same God. Now, I find that very enlightening and interesting because of what God's doing through these special miracles and how he's using a particular commissioning, which is the diversity of activities, to, do, to the difference between the ministries, for they have different functions, and by the variety of gifts that are being distributed for the purpose of what God's wanting to use that individual for. Now, like I've said before, God has placed angels as our benefactors of the gift that we receive, for they do the gift for us, as we see. Spiritual, spiritual gifts works to things that be distributed individually as he so wills. 1 Corinthians 12, that's what we were just going through. It is so obvious that the Holy Spirit is equipping the saints of God for a massive outpouring of God's love and power. Now, you remember some of you here came in early before we started the recording and heard the word that God had given me this morning about sharing with you about what's coming. This is important to understand what why the Lord's doing all this. Recently, I heard three brand name preachers touch upon the need for angels. The connection between the angels, also known as ministering spirits, are the gifts of the Holy Spirit, are the gifts of the Holy Spirit are coming more in focus, knowing what that has to do with each other, the ministering spirits and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I was shown by the Holy Spirit a number of years ago about a variety of angels and how they effectively minister in various gifts of the Holy Spirit. You will be hearing more about this from other ministries as the days go by, for this revelation is huge and sweeping across the nations. But to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Well, if you're an heir of salvation, it means you are born again. And if you're born again and spirit-filled, you're going to have an angel appointed to you if you receive, and you shall be blessed for it. If the Holy Spirit is tugging on your heart to seek a word of prophecy, it could be because he has a spiritual gift that he wants to impart into you to establish your ministry. Listen to this in Romans 1. For I long to hear from you that I may impart into you some spiritual gift so you may be established. Don't you know there's a lot of people out there in ministry who have been fighting it for years and they just couldn't break through because they didn't have any spiritual gift to help them? No angel appointed to help them? Once you receive your spiritual, gift, your spiritual gifts and your appointed angels, they cannot be removed. You'll never lose your gift from God and his word, prom his word is a promise and it promises this. For the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable, Romans eleven twenty nine. So the g gifts are not going to be ever be taken from you. They cannot ever be taken away from you. Be not foolish, though. <laughs> However, with this newfound power from God, for he is faithful to his word, and he will not take the gift from you. However, if you harm his people or abuse them in any way, he will simply remove you from the face of the earth. Won't take the gift, he'll just remove the vessel. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction, and I've seen people actually do it. Abuse the gift and abuse God's people and pay a heavy price for it. Some just crazy. Now, I got another little story for you. You always like the stories, but stories do help. They help give you the ability to be able to put in picture what God actually does and how he does it. And it helps me to be able to share with you what God is doing and has done. And, I, and you know, I'm, I'm kind of like an old plow. Um, God's been using me for years to, to break hard ground. Some of these areas that I've come in sharing what God's put on my heart to share have not been well received. I've had a lot of churches slam the doors in my face, not have me come back anymore because usually I was talking about something that they disagreed with. You know, 
people didn't want me preaching on angels, but angels are important. They are there as gifts for us, and they are powerhouses for us. They are there to secure us, to to do all kinds of things for us as God gives us the word to speak. And you'll see here in the next little bit of in the notes we're going through today of those things that God uses these angels for and what they can do and how to activate them. And that's what's so interesting to me that these prophecies that I've been sending out just as a late, and believe me, I have a bunch piled up in the request to do, but we're moving through them as quickly as we possibly can. And we're mailing them out, uh, the handkerchiefs out, just as soon as we can get everything lined up with the post office uh, because they have to be specially handled. You know, they're, they're not something we take lightly. We're not going to send bulk mail. That's not going to happen. And it's not just a, a piece of cloth. It is a true handkerchief. And it is inscribed, as you have seen before. So my point is this, is that God is doing something again to see if the people are ready to receive, if they're ready to walk into this newfound power that God wants to use to bring forth a massive move of his love and power. How does that work? Jesus said himself, you come to me and call me Lord, Lord, but I know you not. And they said, but we heal the sick. We cast out demons in your name. We prophesied. He said, turn from me. I don't even know you. Why? Because they didn't do it in his love. They had no love for it. They did it for whatever, personal gain for whatever. Now, what I'm saying is God's going to release these gifts for the purpose of you and I being used to reach the masses with his love and power. When people begin to see the power of what God can do, and they witness firsthand his miracles, things begin to change in the lives of people. They can't denounce that which happens before them. If they do, they're foolish. And there will be those who will foolishly walk away, shaking their heads, saying they don't believe it, even though they saw saw it happen. Witness it take place. But you know that all you're responsible for is to do whatever God tells you to do, and not there to please the people or entertain the people. You're there for the purpose of showing God's love and power, love through power. And that is a powerful thing. Jesus said that they'll not believe except they see see signs and wonders. Now, he did also say there's a perverse generation that seeks after after signs and wonders. That's true. But we don't have people come to us seeking the, the signs and wonders. They come seeking the love of God. I need God to help me. Does God love me to help me get delivered to this thing? Does God love me that he's going to help me get out of this situation financially? Whatever it is, that's what God is here for. And he doesn't take it lightly. It's very important to him too. So back to our notes. Now, in 1989, after receiving my first spiritual gift, the gift of prophecy, the gift of prophecy was came and the laying on of hands, I wanted to know how it all works in the realm of the spirit. Even though I, I had questions about whether how whether it's even real when I experienced it actually happen and then had something take place afterwards that really shocked me about it, I knew I had the gift. I knew I had I had been proven that was last week's message, laying on the hands. When I finally received God's revelatory word, everything became clear to me. Amazingly, he pulled back the veil and showed me when a spiritual gift is given and an angel is appointed to minister in the gift for you, all you have to do is follow what he, what he has commissioned you to do, then the angel will show up. And it's true. Then two years later, God sent another angel who spoke to me, and he spoke these words, I will tell you what you need to know, and I will prosper you. Well, unknowingly, I chased the angel off because at the particular time I thought, if you're talking about prosperity, prosperity, then that's got to be the devil because I didn't believe in the prosperity ministry. I foolishly rebuked the angel, and it left me. In two weeks, the bottom of our ministry just fell out. Our finances fell out altogether. We had no income. Offerings came to a halt. Troubles started piling up. As I cried out to the Lord for his grace and blessing, he said, I sent one to help you, and you ran him off. I knew clearly he had 
real, I had really messed up. <laughs> I knew I had messed up big time and I was in trouble. Knowing that I needed a plan, I began to seek his gift of repentance, his gift of repentance. Do you know a gift of repentance? You know, we don't think we can just say, well, God, I'm sorry. And it's okay. No, you have to find that place where God gifts you with the ability to be able to have repentance. Because when you truly have the gift of repentance, there's some things you can't turn from. Maybe, maybe it's alcoholism, maybe it's drugs, maybe it's fornication, whatever it is. If you seek God for true repentance, he's going to give you the power to overcome that. And that's what I needed. I needed the power to get this angel back because I'd made real clear to me, I had just messed up and I needed to bring the angel back before my ministry totally collapsed. Uh, God graciously allowed me to see and have the insight of what I needed to do through this gift of repentance. I was to go to the tabernacle, pray, preach, and prophesy. Obediently, I jumped out of the bed at 4.30 in the morning after praying all night when God spoke to me this to go do, and I headed for the tabernacle. Standing in the empty sanctuary, I put, on a blank, put in a blank cassette tape knowing what I was to preach, his word, that he had come, that had come to me. I knew what I was to preach. I prayed. He gave me what to preach. And at some point during the message, I prayed the angel of prophecy would deliver to me my prophetic word. In my mind, I was preaching to a building full of angels. And I did not stop until I could get my prophetic word. At that particular time, I was pastoring a church, Prophetic Ministries Tabernacle in Keller, Texas. And that was the sanctuary I went to to deliver the message. Uh, here again, but to which of the angels he ever said, sit it to my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Hebrews 1, 13 and 14. I had been doing a lot of studying on angels after this experience. I figured if they, and I, what I'm talking about is the experience after I received that first impartation, and then a couple of years later, the angel spoke to me. I realized I'd, I rebuked him, ran him off, and he was there to help me. And, I, and everything started falling apart because I ran him off. And, uh, you know, I, I figured if they are sent to us by God, we best know something about them. So I needed to learn something about angels. As I made my way to the pulpit where the tape recording system was, I put the blank tape in the recorder. My theory was that God's angels could always be found wherever God's people are gathered, knowing from Scripture that whatever the Lord spoke in heaven had to manifest on earth as it is written. Your kingdom comes, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Matthew 6 and 10. All I had to do was speak whatever he was saying from heaven, and his angels would have to do his word. The angelic host of God have been commanded to do his will on earth as it has been proclaimed in heaven. This is a huge breakthrough for the body of Christ. If you can find God and his word and speak his word on earth as it has been spoken from the throne of God, his angels will do his word. It says so. It says so in Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, you his angels who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. And here's the good part about that. It does not matter who's, who is speaking his word. That has been sent down from heaven. Whoever gets his word can speak that word. All that matters is knowing what his word is to be proclaimed. After his word is spoken on earth, everything will begin to change, for his angels will do his word. With that in mind, the tape was in the recorder. With a sound system live throughout the sanctuary, I began to preach the message from my heart. Not seeing one angel sitting in the pews, I continued to preach as if the room was packed out with angels. Finally, his word came, delivered by the angel of prophecy that I had been appointed to unto me a few years prior. This angel's, angel is God's messenger appointed to minister for me, ascending and descending from his throne, delivering his prophetic word for whomever is in need of a word from God. This night, that prophetic word was for me. I can just imagine what my angel thought when he 
landed in the tabernacle sanctuary and saw all these angels filling up the room. What are you guys doing here? I can imagine him saying with a resounding reply. Well, we're waiting on his words so we can know what to do. Maybe it doesn't actually happen that way, but I think you get the idea. Now for the final results and blessing from all my praying, hearing, and obeying. Satisfied that I had my word of prophecy, I shut everything down and went home, leaving the tabernacle knowing in my spirit it is finished. I had done all that I could do. It was time to sit back and patiently wait upon his word to do the work. Two weeks had gone by, and we still trusted that his word was going to work for us. Then the day finally came. Now, we're broke people. I mean, we, we are we are more broke than a church house mouse. We have nothing to eat. We had to go to the, one of the other churches to get some food out of their, their pantry. We, we, had, we even had, embarrassing, embarrassing me, I had to go get some money from welfare. We were that broke. Now, the answer came. Someone's at the door knocking. I opened up the door and a middle-aged man in a suit and tie was standing there. He introduced himself, and all I remember is his first name, Harold. This all occurred during the autumn of 1993. I invited him into our humble little home, and he sat down. Without hesitation, he began to state his reason for coming to visit us. And so, I, you know, I'm all ears. But I'm kind of curious, what is he selling? He asked if I knew of a list of men who 22 years prior I had played high school football in Texas with. We talked about each player, and we had a fond memories of those good old days. Then he got to the point of his coming. As he reached into his coat pocket, he handed me an envelope, and then he left. As he's backing out of the driveway, I open up the envelope and pull out a cashier's check in the amount of $50,000 payable to me. I was floored, utterly shocked. Needless to say, it was God's angel of prosperity was back. <laughs> God's angel of prosperity was back to minister for me. The evidence can always be found in God's unrelenting love and grace. From that for time forward, this ministering spirit has been there for this ministry many times over. God's favor never fails those who pray, hear, and obey. If you do it his way, it'll work every time. Don't add to it and don't subtract from it. Just do it the way he says. That's why we got to take it very serious when God speaks. Don't take it lightly at all. It will not benefit you. And don't cut corners and don't try to push things faster than they're supposed to go because all you'll do is mess it up. Walk alongside him. He didn't intend for us to get ahead of him and he doesn't plan on you walking behind him. He wants you to walk right beside him. And when you pray here and obey, you have that relationship that gives you that ability to be able to know what to do at any given time. However, when you have spiritual gifts, that are given to you. They're not loaned to you. It's not just one time thing. It is a gift that is there that will be there for you every time you do whatever he says to do to activate it. At my activation at that particular time for doing prophecies was to pray, to find out what to preach, preach it and prophesy. Since then it's changed. So many things have changed, but God's always added more. He doesn't take away. He just adds more. For where you show the measure of things that you're doing according to what he's asked you to do, the more you do, more shall be given. Where more is given, there's more power, but there's also greater responsibility. You have to do it his way. But the one thing about it is when you don't have to worry about a thing, all you have to do is find him and all your problems will be solved. And believe me, he'll step up to the biggest problem to the littlest problem and everything in between. And you will see, God will make it work for you too. I tell you, this day, 
that Jesus is not dead. He's alive, and he's speaking to you and I. I pray you're listening to him now. I pray you hear what he says. I pray you receive the, the email that's coming to you here in just a little bit, and you respond to that because I want to seek God on your behalf, to impart the spiritual gifts, to point the angels as God so says, and see these things happen so that you too, when you walk into a room full of lost people, the spirits that are in them that are not of God will leave, and the spirits of God shall enter in as they follow you. So be it. God bless you all, and to all a good day.